One song every day the rest of your life. That's all you could listen to. It's playing 24-7 in your head. You can't turn it off. What you? What's it going to be? Ready to die, Biggie. One pair of shoes Ooh, every good. day the rest of your life. <laughs> From right now at this From age. Right now at this age, You got to wear it whether you training, man. whether you in the snow, I'm, I'm always, the beach. I'm always, I'm, I'm an Air Force One kind of guy, okay. so I'm always going to rock my Air Force Ones. Got the off whites. You know, got the off whites, right. but I, I, I can't rock these every day. All right. Yeah, but Air Force Ones, man. Ones, that's what I call them. One food, one meal. You have to have the same meal every day rest of your life i'll be fat as hell with pancakes pancakes i love me some pancakes bro, bro. tearing you up bro it's tearing me up man. Oh. But, but hey bro i mean yeah when i, when I came pancakes back, and wet wipes when i, when I came <laughs> back from china man that's the first thing i ate there was some pancakes bro so. there's no pancakes in china nah not like not like our pancakes nah, nah. they're different well, how it, it no no there's, 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 there's nah it's not nah. the same not the same one one shirt every day for the rest of your life Yeah, that's a tough one. I guess it'd be the one I'm rocking right now because I'm an underdog. My underdog mentality. You roll with that underdog mentality. You feel you, you got that every day. Every day, bro. It's, it was embedded in me since I was in high school. Yeah. So, yep. What embedded that in you? I mean, where I grew up, um, the trials and tribulations I had to go through. Um, you no. Know, Brief history about me, BP. I was 4'11 as a freshman in high school, bro. So, you know, I wasn't real tall. Yeah. Didn't get any dates that year. Like, no girls going to talk to some dude who's 4'11. You know, as a freshman at 14 years old, bro. So oh, <laughs> that was kind of rough, you know, running up. Hey, you want to go out on a date? And I'm looking up, and they're like, no, little man. I'm like, mm, damn, no. this, is, this is cold world. But, uh, yeah, man. You know, from, from my basketball days, I was never supposed to be where I'm at. And that's all due to the mentality I had, and that was that underdog mentality. Wasn't going to give up. How were your parents as far as building that, you know, that mindset for you? Like, I uh, You know, I grew up in a, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to say, you know, because the relationship I have with my father now, but grew up in a one-parent household. You know, me and my two sisters lived together. My two older sisters, I got four sisters, but uh, my mother instilled that hard work mentality from jump, you know. Verbally or just Verbally watching? and watching. You know, you got to work hard for anything you want to get in this world. Nice. And, you know, I had to watch her, you know, work the, the three to midnight shift every night, holidays, Thanksgiving. We had to cut Thanksgiving short because she had to go to work. You know, cut cut Christmas short because she had to go to work. So that mentality was, you know, was installed in me early. Yeah. So you know, you know that underdog, that 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 grit, that grit, that yeah, grind that was early, man. Yeah, yeah, came came early, man. You know, and if I didn't see how hard she worked, you know, and that's nothing against my father. Yeah. My father worked on the docks. He worked his ass off. He was a hard worker as well. So. You know, he, he chose his work more than he did some other things, which was, you know, important to him. You know, he was a second-generation longshoreman in San Francisco. So, wow. you know, the, if you know anything about longshoremen in the docks, that stuff is not easy. Yeah. And I would have been third-generation. Thank God I didn't do yeah. that. Yeah, I followed my own dream, man. And, hey, Got look where I'm at. You had to run your own race, bro. You had to run your own race, bro. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you already know it. Yes, sir. Hey, what, what other sports did you play growing up? And really, I was I, I really loved baseball, bro. I loved baseball. See um, that? I did not really like basketball until I was unable to play baseball because of some grades. Go to school, kids. Go to school, man. Don't be like JC. Yeah. JC in fifth grade was getting D's. Mom's cut her end of the baseball. So once she cut her end of the baseball, she didn't say I couldn't play basketball. And once loophole. I started playing basketball, yeah, loophole. <laughs> couldn't say I couldn't play basketball. Yeah, so yeah, hey, yeah. look, you know, once I started playing hoops, you know, I just ran with it. Nothing else, nothing else was in my in my in my eyesight, man. So, but I, I loved baseball. You know, my grandfather used to take me to Giants games okay. and stuff. That's what you yeah, knew. You know, I knew it. You know, Willie Mays and mm -hmm. all those, all the history of baseball in San Francisco was great, man. And you know, I, I felt, I still feel to this day. People probably laugh, but. Yeah, I always say, you know, had I done this, I'd be a, uh, I would have been a gazillionaire yeah. in baseball. 
I was throwing people out of third base, wow. throwing them out from left field. Wow. Had a cannon. Off the wall. You know, I was four foot eleven. Yeah. You had to have, to have, some, gotta have, have something. Gotta have something. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I, I had fun with it, man. Really, really love baseball, bro. What what did you love the most about baseball? Like what Oh what was man. It? The 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 best thing I could take from baseball was the the camaraderie, you know. You know, it was you know the teammates, man. You know, we was young. You know that that eight, nine, ten year old. Yeah. You know, just going, just hanging out with your boys yep. in the park, just throwing the ball around, and some other some other team talking crap. And you know, all right, well, wait till I get up to bat, chump. You know, and or you ain't getting the first base off me. Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things. So it was, I, I really missed that camaraderie back in the day. But you know, basketball is similar. Yeah. You know, it's similar when it comes to the camaraderie and the teamwork. So it was cool. You know, I really loved. I like being outdoors, you know. She didn't want to be in. I didn't want to be in the house, man. Yeah. You know, I don't know how kids today can sit around and be in the house, being on the, f on their, on the <laughs> watching TV, you know, using their thumbs more than they use it. You know, yeah. um, I can't, I can't deal with it, bro. I was out. So, yeah. what did you love about basketball once you started playing? Like, what, what drew you to it, other than the fact that it wasn't baseball and it was an option you could do? Man, I think. Um, I really liked playing defense. I mean, that's where I got my game. Pride in that. I took pride in defense, man. And offensively came later. Yeah. You know, I knew I had to, you know, I was four foot 11. The only way I was going to get on the court was I had to, lock, I had to pick, lock, lock somebody up, pick them up full court, all that kind of stuff. And and uh, that was the fun part, you know. Yeah. And it's a fun part, you know, scoring a layup. Obviously, I wasn't dunking, you know, scoring a layup and all that kind of stuff. Man, that stuff was cool. And, you know, scoring that layup, getting right there, clapping right there, playing defense, and uh, that stuff was way better than baseball at that yeah. time. Yeah. You know, you know, I can't, I can't really talk snap, talk crap out in left field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you out there alone. You know, what I'm saying you out there on your island on <laughs> mm -hmm. left field. I'm looking at the center fielder like, oh, what are we doing later? You know, we having short conversations, but not in basketball. That stuff was fast paced. Yeah, you yeah. picked it up fast. Yeah, I didn't like football. Yeah. No, I didn't like getting hit. Yeah. Yeah. I caught the ball one time. Dude hit me in the stomach. Caught, like, I'm good. My air was gone. I took the pads off right then and there. I was done, bro. I said, I ain't never playing football again unless it's flag. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> yep. On the field. On the left field. Them. I left them pads on the field. Straight up. Bam. I'm out. Oh, my God. I was gone. <laughs> Ooh, you played all the way through high school. I did. What was your senior year like? Well, the high school I went to, unfortunately, we were not known for basketball. Okay. We weren't really – we were at, when I – my freshman year. You know, we had some really good, talented ball players in freshman year, and I got to watch and learn the game from a lot of those guys. And, uh, you know, as I got older and got better and started playing a little summer ball with different players, you know, AAU wasn't really that big in the 90s. Yeah. In the late 80s, early 90s. And – um. But my senior year was cool, man. I just came back from Vegas. You know, I, was, I had a little bravado about me. I had a little arrogance about me, knowing that I could play on some levels with a lot of players. Not four eleven anymore. Not four eleven. I grew to six foot at that okay. time, man. You know, I drank milk, drinking milk, two percent. You know, two percent, two percent milk. You know, what I mean, I drank that a lot. Tried to stretch my legs out, didn't work. But you know, body grew a little bit, so I was pretty cool about that. But um, you know, I had a great summer, man. You know, I went to Vegas, played with some great ball players. You know, and uh, you know, like I said, I had a little arrogance about me, and I, I carried that over to the team. And you know, we didn't win a whole lot of games, but we won enough to where people knew who JC was, who mm. James Clark was. And you know, I ain't gonna lie, I had that that Michael Jordan complex in me a little bit. I was a little, I could be a little asshole at times for sure. <laughs> I mean, who yeah. can, bro? Hey, man. We all hey, can. Hey, if you didn't make that layup, you ain't getting the ball back, you know? You know? That's real. Yeah. So, yeah. It's funny, man. One of my good friends, Durham. Durham, if you watch this, you're going to laugh at this. You know, we're playing a game. And uh, I felt like I was pretty close to a triple-double in high school. And 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 he'll he'll always comment that I missed some other shots. But I'm like, bro, you missed, you missed like, some gimme layups. Yeah. Those, those gimme layups would have had me a triple-double, bro, in high, yeah, yeah. in high school. And so, I was – I always kid him about that, but, you know, it's one of my best friends growing up, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I miss those days. You know, I miss them. If I can go back to high school right now, she would be fucking fantastic. Bro, can you imagine? <laughs> imagine being in high school. Man, like, what? What these kids have access man, to. This, yeah. 
No. Like I, the thirst we had, the thirst you had uh, to just, you know. With everything. Not just sports. No, everything. It's easier now. I tell people all the time I say, when, I, when I speak to kids, it's like, you guys know what a rotary phone is. If they don't know what a rotary phone is, like, what is that? Where you, where you hit a number and it goes, comes back to that number. You to, I said, well, then you had to talk to parents. You guys got it easy. Right? IG, you could DM somebody. You could text people right away. Heck, man. I couldn't do that. If I wanted to go see a girl, I had to throw a rock at a window. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do something. Something. Yeah. something. Psst, come out. Write a note, fold yeah. it up. Charge fold it up. And yes, no, maybe. <laughs> call, a hang up, call a hang you know, up twice to, so they do, oh, you know, okay, yeah, I'm ready yeah. call me back. If I hang up on the second ring, it's JC. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what other dude you got calling you, but yeah. <laughs> that James Clark is calling again, Susan. Yeah, shit. I had some fun times, man. High school was great. So you went to college. You played in college. So, man, I took the road less traveled, bro. Yeah, man. See, this is the part where school comes into play. You know, coming out of high school, I had two scholarship offers, one at the University of Oregon and one at the University of San Francisco. And your boy didn't do well on his SATs. You know, they had that th at that time they had a thing called Prop 48, which was you had to sit out a whole year okay. if you didn't, you know, pass your SATs. And... You know, people always joke, ah, oh, you get 700 just by putting your name down. That's that's some BS, people. Don't let nobody ever that's tell BS, you that. bro. I got 850. Yeah, yeah, don't let nobody ever tell you that that stuff is true. You know, um, it was a bad year because around the time I was taking the SATs, my mom got real sick and was hospitalized. And, and you know, my focus was more on my mom, you know, because that was my center of my sure. world. And I really didn't, you know, I only took the test one time, and it was like an 8 o'clock in the morning test, and I was in a hospital on Friday that night, you know, not to say that I wasn't studying or nothing like that. I just wasn't focused for it, and I failed it, and, and I owned up to it. So I had to go to junior college. And had I not gone to junior college, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today. That's the honest guy's truth, man. You know, I, first I went to a place called Foothill, and I met a lot of my close friends. Where's Foothill? So I, Foothill's in Los, Al Los, uh, yeah, Los Altos, California. Okay. Like, right down the street from Stanford. Okay. So, not too far. So, for me, that was a hike because Stanford is like 40 minutes from my house. So, I would drive down there. And I just wanted to get away. I didn't want to go to the normal junior colleges that everybody went to. So, you know, our mutual friend, Mr. Phil Handy, which we'll get into later, <laughs> he went to the school right up, up, up above my house. So, I was going to go to Skyline. But the coach that I played there every year, every summer, but he never recruited me. So for me, it was like a slap in the face. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, you know me since I was, you know, 13, 14. You seen me in high school, but you don't want me to come there. Yeah. So I went to Foothill, tried it out, didn't like it. And I chose a school that I probably should have went to the first time was Santa Rosa Junior College. Okay. Shout out SRJC, the Bear Cubs. And uh, that was across the Golden Gate Bridge, two hours away from home. So to me, that was like living in... You know, that was college experience. Sure. I had, you know, I had my own apartment, lived in the dorms, and that's where I kind of really grew into who I am right now, man. But, you know, it was, had I not gone to junior college, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, man. So shout out to all those people going to community college, junior college, man. Your path is always different than other people, and don't let nobody else tell you different. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, from junior college, I went to school in... Georgia. So I left California, the Bay Area, to go to a school in Georgia. First time. First time. Uh, yeah, not the for first extended time. Extended period of time. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, and it was it was different. Yeah. Put it to you like Georgia. that, you know. Georgia is the South, mm -hmm. and you know I was gonna go to uh, HBCU school at the at okay. first. I was gonna go to Clark Atlanta with my with another good of my good friends named Lamont, and uh, my cousin Albie, but. Uh, a school came in at the last minute, gave me a little scholarship money to go there and play hoop. And it's called West Georgia College. It was 32 miles outside of Atlanta, west of Atlanta. Now, if you know anything about Atlanta or Georgia in general, once you leave Atlanta, you're in the, you're in the south. You're in Georgia. Yeah. And once you leave those city limits, you're in the south. So for me, again, California boy, you know, liberal as hell, you know, do whatever I wanted to do in Cali. Ah, once you in Georgia, black, white. Yeah. And it took me a while to get used to that, bro. I never really dealt what with What year is this? 
this was in 95. Okay. Yep. So, no, 94. Sorry, 94. 94. And uh, it, it, it was a culture shock to me, man. You know, but again, you know, that road will take you down some, your, your, your road will take you down a path that you don't know where it's going to lead to. And, and for me, I had an outstanding year playing hoops for me. Hoops was great. I had a great time on a basketball court. It was just living in Georgia yeah. that I didn't like. Yeah. Loving yeah. it. Yeah. Loving so, the game that you Yeah. Did. I mean, you know, I didn't start right away. I, I didn't start the first six games, but I competed. And, and you know, once I got into that starting lineup, it was a lock. It was over with, you know. I think yeah. the first game I started, I scored the – hit the game winning shot at the end. You know, it was cool, you know. You know, and, you, know you, get, you got, got the little fandom, you know. People know who you are around campus a little bit, you know. Well, that so changes things. That changes things a lot, you know. Everything. Changes things a lot. Put a little smile on the young, uh -huh. Clark, young Clark's face, you know. But, uh, you know, with that also came being homesick. And, you know, and it was also at the end of the, towards the end of the year, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. So that put a lot of different perspective on what I should do. And me and the coach weren't seeing eye to eye and, one thing led to another for me to to dip out. So I went back home, took care of my mom, and took a semester off, which was tough, you know. Yeah, it's tough, you know, if you've ever, ever dealt with cancer before, but it was yeah. it was tough for me to deal with at that time. And, you know, again, I, I wasn't really thinking about hoops. I was almost going to give it up, you know. And a good friend of mine, shout out E. Will, introduced me, Eric Williams, uh, who's a, who's a, who's a, a legend in the in the in the parts of the Bay Area that I grew up in. Um, a good friend of his was coaching at a school. Saw me, wanted me to go there, a little NAIA school. So again, I was able to go to a school and and play play that next year. Nice. Yeah, and finish out my senior year. Yeah, man. So you know, how was that? The school, Bethany College. Um, <laughs> it was it was again. Basketball is always going to be fine. It's the school part that wasn't yeah. fine for me, bro. You know, I, I ain't going to lie to you. I did not like going to school whatsoever. <laughs> How did you do on the grades at the, before you left uh, the I first mean, school in Georgia? Yeah, the grades were cool. You know, I think, you know, it was on a tri-semester. So, okay. you know, had I stayed the whole year, I would have been fine. But, yeah. you know, I left after the winter, winter, after basketball was over, and I found out my mom was sick. I just dipped, yeah. you know, you know talked to the coach he said I wasn't he didn't like me that much so yeah I was like all right here's my transfer this is where I want to go yeah. you know but uh my grades were cool you know yeah I did all right you know had some tutors I hated history history's the worst subject yeah, in the world for me man I mean I understand man. why the hell we had to do history they don't never tell us the right yeah. stuff anyways history but, geography yeah, yeah. math I ain't, I ain't never used no like algebra use. in my life man yeah you know come on but yeah, geometry, algebra, you know, what's that other thing? What's after what's after algebra? What's after geometry? Uh, trigonometry, trigonometry calculus. and calculus. Who in the yeah. I you, I can't even raise my hand to tell you if I ever use something with calculus. Man. Give me some business math. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, good. Like yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, like see, I'm not trying to teach my kids like math right now. And they're like, teachers like, nah, you can't teach me your old math. I remember I'm like, they showed me that. Yeah, hey, look, man, I use my hands. I can't use my boxes hands. And yeah, dots. I'm, like, what? I'm like, what the, the hell, hell is this? this? Bro? Like, yeah. One, two, three. three. <laughs> like, <laughs> Round it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, but now nah, grades got cool. I took it a lot more seriously. But you know, once I went back home, uh, take care of moms and 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 started my journey at this other school. I really locked in on that and. Had a good year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I started and he, the coach wanted me to be more of a scorer, which I never, that wasn't my forte yeah. at, that, at that point in time. But the main reason I went there, the guy played in the NBA, a guy named John Block. Shout out Coach Block, man. Coach Block played, he was a USC legend. He played for the Chicago Bulls. You know, he was a journeyman, one of those type journeyman type okay. players yep. in the NBA in the 70s. He's probably high on some acid or something like that, but you know he's one of them type dudes. Him and Bill Walton hanging out, but you know he's Southern California dudes. You know, oh my god, you know surfers and shit. <laughs> but uh, you know, he was a, he taught me a lot about the game. Yeah, man. he taught me how poured to, into you. Taught me how to taught me how to move without the ball. Where more. were you getting your knowledge before that? Well, I mean. You know, I, I, I like who were you watching when you watch a game on the weekend? Obviously, I watching. watched a lot of basketball, bro. Yeah. So you, you know, were watching everyone. I watched it. Obviously, everybody liked Michael Jordan at that yeah. time. 
man, you know, I watched a lot of Dr. J at yeah, that time. Okay. It Isaiah Thomas, uh, Jordan. I was a big Michael Jordan yeah, fan, bro. Everybody was, was yeah. you know. You know, he changed the game for everybody. But I love Sleepy Floyd because yeah. I'm from the Golden State Warriors, bro. I, I grew up a Warriors fan. Yeah. And, you know, Sleepy Floyd, Chris Mullen, before Chris be, Mullen, before, yep. before Tim got there. But uh -huh. Sleepy Floyd was my guy, man. And a uh, quick, quick story. I got to coach at Georgetown women's basketball. For, and, uh, you know, Sleepy Floyd went there. So we are at a gala for John Thompson. And Sleepy Floyd's right there. And I tell you, man, I was like a little kid in a candy store, man. I went up to him. I said, yo, bro, I grew up in the Bay. I had your poster on my wall. You know, I, I used to, we went to games. You guys suck, but we went to games, you know, and <laughs> my mom was at every game we could go to, bro. Yeah. And I said, I always watch Sleepy Floyd. And I said, I said Mr. Floyd, I appreciate you. Yep. you know, thanks for helping Show me love. get show, showing got that love, group. man. And I got my groupie on for a quick second, man. Yeah. I got a quick po picture with him and stuff. But Just showing love, man. man. I don't like groupie. Yeah, just man, I felt like one, man. Everywhere he went, I was like right there, right next to him. <laughs> and she was like, hey, hey. He's like, you again? Yeah, man, my bad dog. You know, I just want to soak it up, bro. You know, soak up that knowledge. I know you dropping some. Yeah. Iverson was there. Dikembe, uh, Alonzo, it was cool, man. That was a good good moment in my life, you know, coaching at Georgetown for that brief second. But, uh, nah, I love me some Sleepy Floyd, bro. Um, a lot of a lot of, a lot of college basketball. And this is a name that's going to shock you that I like. The guy named Rex Chapman. I know, yeah. Man, I'm, that white boy could jump, bro. And he had a and he had a jumper at that time. He was so athletic. I ain't never seen a white guy that athletic. So for me, watching him play at Kentucky, I really wanted to go there. So you know, guys used to always. I used to have Kentucky basketball hoodies and all that stuff, bro. It was crazy. Chasing that. Yeah, I was chasing that Kentucky dream back in the, in high school yeah. days. But nah, man. But yeah, it was cool. You know, I I had a lot of good upbringing, man. When it came to to my basketball knowledge, you get uh, you asked like who taught me the game. We played a lot of basketball, as you know, on the streets. And you know, I was fortunate enough, the area I lived in in San Bruno, California, we had a place, a park, a Parks and Rec. And I used to sneak out of, I used to sneak out of class some days to go play lunchtime ball, bro. And, you know, had I not done that, I, again, you know, I'm not gonna be where I'm at. Yeah. You know, I met a guy Changes named, things. I met a guy named Roger Taylor, you know, Roger Taylor, Put me under his wing. Played. He played for Rick Pitino at Boston University back in the day. He's from New York, another okay. New Yorker. Uh, he's from uh, Manhattan, I believe. He's from Manhattan. Yeah, and uh, he played professionally overseas. And he had just came over, come back from overseas. And San Bruno Park, you know, lunchtime runs was the place to go to at that time. It was known. Yeah, it was known. So you know, me sneaking in there, kids wanted to play hoops. It was like my junior year in high school. So. Raj took me under his wing, man, and showed me the game. He's like, first of all, you can't be skipping classes, bro. You know, then drove my ass back to school. He and showed shit. you all the games. Yeah, man. he showed me. Yeah, he showed me. He showed me a lot of game, bro. But you know, shout out RT, man. RT's my big brother, man. He he ended up being somebody I really, really nice respected and, and mentored me like that, man. You know, so people are important. Yeah, man. He was definitely, def definitely important in my upbringing and my my future and who I am. So I want to take you through a journey, but before I do that, I want yeah. to ask you, I don't want to get too deep into this because with the journey we're going to go on, but I know you met Phil junior like college, junior college. Mm -hmm. So how, like, tell me the story of like how you guys actually met, man, it's, it's <laughs> the, the, my first time really seeing Phil and not really meeting him. We were at a Modesto tournament, which is a little, again, it's another part of Northern California that's a little bit of ways, like maybe two hours away from San Francisco, okay. but he's playing for the school, Skyline College, and I was playing for Santa Rosa. My freshman, my, my first year playing, his sophomore year playing, and you know, when we're in the stands, I'm waiting for a game, and, and we're watching this the game before us, and Skyline was playing somebody, and all of a sudden, I just seen this dude just jump out of the gym, he caught his lob, and bam! And he hit that lob. I mean, he dunked it so hard, bro. I'm like, who the fuck is that, bro? You know, I'm like, this skinny dude. And his feel was real majorly skinny. Yeah. You know, maybe a maybe a buck fifty five, buck sixty at that, right? But he could jump out this damn world, bro. People always say, ah, can OG before, can OG yeah. dunk? I'm like, bro, OG used to skyrocket. And his nickname was the handyman. <laughs> right. So here comes the handyman, right? So 
I mean, literally, they threw the, they did three live plays in sequence, and he dunked all three lives. I'm like, damn, don't y'all dummies know that here comes another lob? He just did one on the exact same play. But, you know, I went home and went up to Skyline, and he was there. We started playing. That's when we kind of met. Then we met again at a, a Pump Brothers basketball camp in Fullerton, California, for junior college players. Dana, Dana and the other brother, one of them Pump Brothers, they were well known for, you know, showcasing okay. junior college talent. And, and uh, you know, me and my boy Lamont, we was down there, and him and Lamont were on the same team, and we got to talking, and we're from the Bay Area, and then one thing led to another, man, and, you know, I'm at Phil's house. Yeah. So, you know, wherever Phil's at, I'm, yeah. I'm right there. Phil's at Skyline, uh, Phil's in Oakland at Contra Costa playing basketball with Gary Payton and Brian Shaw, and... And Jay Kidd, who I I known Jay before, and we're all playing. I'm wherever Phil was at, I was there. I wanted yeah. to be like his, you know, his homeboy. I wanted to be, you know, because yeah. I knew he had game, and I yeah. knew I was gonna get better wherever he was yeah. at. So that's kind of like the, you know, our. How was his mind then? Oh man, I mean, it was all about hoop, you know, and you know, he was so he was so athletic, man, and he can shoot, and he had a nice one two dribble pull up you know yeah. three pointers was there but you know back in those again three pointers wasn't as prevalent as it yeah. is now so um you know he was sharp on the floor he always got to his spots and he knew he can re ele elevate over you because he had that jumper he had mm -hmm. that he had that athleticism so i mean his mind was always on point he yeah, was always a, you know Steps was ahead he imparting stuff on you, or you had to pick it up from watching? Oh no, nah. I mean, you know, I, I, wherever he was at, you know, yeah. I pick his brain, yeah, you know, yeah. and it got to the point where he's like, "Yo, Jay, we gonna play here," <laughs> you know, "Oh, Jay, yo, come over here, meet me over here. Yeah. Can you get here?" You know, "Jay, let's go work out." It got to that point, you know, and you know when he went to Hawaii, uh, you know, I don't know if he told you a story about how he got to University of Hawaii. No. You know, uh, you know, he could have went anywhere, bro. Shashevsky, all these dudes okay. were coming. The Tarkanian and UNLV, you know, you know, he was gonna go to Cal to play with Jay Kidd and and Monty Buckley, and uh, his boy named uh, one one of his boy one of his teammates uh, <laughs> ended up needing a scholarship. So he kind of like jokingly told Hawaii, like, "Hey, look, if you want me, you got to get my boy a scholarship." But they were teammates, and he said, if you do that, I'll come there. So they gave him, his boy, the scholarship. Damn. Right? Solid. Yeah, and he kind of, like, thought they were joking. He kind of, like, did yeah. it to, like, get you off me, right? Like, ah, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. And I was like, man, you going to do that for him and not me? <laughs> 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 what? You going to give Lindell this opportunity and not me? I was hot, man. I was like, man, it could be me and you in Hawaii, bro. <laughs> right? I was like, I was so, I was so pissed, bro. Oh my I'm God. like, you could have went anywhere and you want to go to Hawaii, but hey. It you still be in Hawaii right now. I'd probably still, I'd be up there surfing with yeah. some dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't know See where that? the hell JC is. It would be a bald head mm -hmm. spot right here. You never seen them dudes with them dreadlocks be having that bald spot at the top and the dreads be all over here yeah. and stuff? That would been a bad look off for me. Side, yeah. Yeah, off the side <laughs> and stuff, but that, that would have been me out there, bro. Out there surfing, man. Have my surfer body. Yeah, but so that's no. how he went. That's how he ended up there. That's how he ended up in Hawaii. But, you know, for him it, it turned out real good for him. Sure. And uh, you know, I was there when he when he was when he made the Golden State Warriors team. You know, I, I went to the house, hung out, Latrell Sprewell, Joe Smith, all these dudes is in his his parents' house and you know, and I was like, Bro, you made it, man, we made it. Then he got cut and we were just like everybody was devastated yeah. and and he got cut some foul way, you know, they you know, they they they, they cut him to save face for Rick Barry to put John Barry on a on a team and yeah, he was way better than John Barry man but you know it's the name politics hey going man, to somebody play. somebody got cut when he brought his boy to, to Hawaii right yeah man <laughs> but shoot he didn't even last there long man that's no. what made it even worse bro well, I'm going to Hawaii next year with you Phil stop bullcrapping man take your boy out to Hawaii man I no. uh, you see he say it a lot on on his uh, on his IG like I say 93 till infinity yeah and if you offer, you know hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, you know that's it's a little Bay Area people right there, man. Souls of mischief. So, you know, that's basically when our friendship basically started was in ninety three. Ninety three. It just grew deeper and deeper. Yeah, man. 
So we're going to walk through some of that in this process. Bet. Bring you back to this. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're going, you're going deep. You're going IG. deep on my IG. You're going deep on my IG. So. Read that to me. Read that for us. Wow. All right. Come on, bro. This, shit this, is, this is July uh, 17th. 2017, okay. I would like to thank the Akita Northern Happenats organization for allowing me to train their players this past week. We put in some great work that I hope will help them reach their goals this upcoming season. Doesn't matter what country you are from, if you love the game, if you love this game, then language barriers are, obs are obsolete. And I rattled off a couple of their players, uh, set the tone from the start. Like we talked about, I have to give special thanks to my interpreter at that time, y uh, Yukio, you're, you are the best, bro. Thank you, man, for all your help, for all you did this week. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I put my, my company as Full Core Solutions FCS Workouts in Japan. So this is my first time. Uh, it's Japan. Japan. Yeah, man. So, yeah. So, so that was, uh, so I got a. How did you get here, out here? How did I get out there? So, what was the story behind that part? No, nah, I mean, um, well, you global yeah. for the people that didn't know. Yeah. Like you've been global. Yeah, I've been you global, global now, but you've uh, been yeah, global. I've been global this is, for this. this 2017. Yeah, man. Right. So a guy named Chris uh Chris Johnson. Okay. You know, Chris Johnson um called me up, introduced me to an agent. He couldn't do it. And I met Chris through Phil. And uh, you know, and um that was a good year, man. You know, 2017 is my first time going over waters in in and really, like, taking a team for 10 days. They wanted to get some work in with their local players. No, none of their uh, imports. It was just all the Japanese-born players. And, you know, I spent 10, 10 beautiful days in northern uh, Akita, which is a small fisherman's-type village in northern, Jap Jap in northern Japan, you know. So I flew into Tokyo, which was crazy. Tokyo's a... a uh, New York on crack, you know, mm -hmm. all over the place, man. It was like everything is happening in Tokyo, right? It was just like busy, 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 like being in Times Square, as you know, and when you know what I mean by New York on crack. Oh, yeah. So, um, drove like two more hours, three, four hours outside that, and all of a sudden I'm in this little town and had the best sushi in the world, bro. But the work was great, man. Gyms is hot, lost a lot of weight. But uh, no, nah, it was my first taste of international workouts, man. So, yeah, that was a that was a good start. What about this one? Mm. Uh, I read this one. Yep. So the family tree has many branches. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the goat Phil for the plug as always. Man, that's my boy Looks J. Like Rob. You in Cleveland. Nah, that's no? in Philly actually. Okay. So he came to Philly. Yep, and you know. I don't know if we can see that. I'll put him up on the screen. I got that. you right here. Boom. J. Rob, what up, boy? Look <laughs> at you. You looking slim in this picture, bro. So, uh, shoot, I just lost it. Good? But but J. Rob, Jamal Robinson. That was right after our Nike Skills Academy. So this was that might have been the summer. What year was that? Uh, that November twenty seventeen. Right. End of November. So I met J. Rob. Me and Phil were were lucky enough to get invited to go to the Nike Skills Academy out in LA. Okay. And we met a lot of good basketball coaches out there, man. It was one of the best, best weekends and most athleticism that I've been around uh, prior to the Kobe Bryant Mamba Academy one. But you know that's the best of the best high school players in the in the country. And I had just got done working out my first pre-draft workout with Ben Simmons and Dejounte Murray out in Cleveland. And Nike invited me to come out there, so that was awesome, man. And J. Rob was the guy that I got real close with, and you know, it was like my brother. And we went to the we went to the game. He drove up from Virginia to come watch Phil play the Sixers, and so it was like Ben's first game against LeBron. Yep. So it was cool, man. It was cool to see you guys out hang there. out after the game. Uh, you know, they had to leave, but me and J. Rob did. But you know, Phil Phil had to dip out. You know, you how know. were your seats? They were cool. <laughs> they weren't high. They weren't. They weren't on the floor, but they were cool. Yeah. You come to Orlando, I'll take you to again. Man, hell we yeah, sit, man. We sit right. You know, this is hey. You know, we sit right. You talk about the origin. This is where it started for yeah. me. We'll get in that. You yeah, know, Orlando. We'll yeah, for sure. All right, bring me bring me back to this one. 
We like the coaching here. Yeah, man. This is you talking about Mr. International. This is this don't get no more international than this right here, right there. This is Surabaya, Indonesia, working for the CLS Knights, man. And then in union there is strength, brotherhood. How'd that experience come about? Again, man, you know, I owe this one to Phil. You know, he yeah. said, Hey, look, I got an opportunity for you to to go out to Indonesia, be a consultant, be a player development and a consultant to the coach. They had just got a young coach in there and, and uh teaching them the way yeah. of, you know, you know, the owner Bring wanted the owner them. wanted to be like an NBA team. Gotcha. You know, yeah. and and uh, you know, as the season got on, I was out there for three months. So it was, it you, was you helped implement some tweaks. Yeah, tweaks, you know, coaching tips. You know, I, they had me sitting on the bench, which I really at first I didn't want to do it. But, you know, he wanted me to be right there. Coco, shout out Coco, man, you know, Coco and Ricky. There were some good uh, good coaches, man, out there in Indonesia. And it was just, you know, we had some good players. You know, uh, Mario Wusong was really one of the guys on the team. I got real close with yep. his family. But, uh, no, nah, it, was, it was a good experience, man. And it got me a little bit to coach over in international. And in that league in particular, the CBA, which was the – um, not the CBA, sorry, but the, um, that's the China Basketball Association. But the, this league was kind of like what they wanted to do with like the Euro League. They we had nine countries and one team from each country. They they played each other. So you know we're going to Vietnam, Thailand, uh, Singapore, Malaysia. Yeah, shit I've never been to before in my life. Yeah. Like, you know I've only seen that stuff on TV, bro. You know or in books. I'm, I'm in there watching seven o'clock in the morning, watching the Super Bowl, knowing I got a game in like you know twelve hours in Malaysia. So it was real crazy, but no, nah, it was a, it was a good time, bro. Yeah. So I went past the picture out, and I'm not gonna show it to you, but I wanted to ask you before I forgot because it's something I talked to Phil about. Mm -hmm. So, growing up, obviously your parents, you know, we all have our own values with our kids, but what are what are some fundamental things that they put in you mm -hmm. that you know helped you on this journey like as, as some of the things that we're looking at right now like you know you're obviously you're overseas you're mm -hmm. in japan like now you're back and you know, i think the biggest value was family first uh if that's a value i'm assuming that's a value yeah. right yeah i mean um uh, you know, I wasn't really a church-going person. We didn't really go to church, so I can't really say anything that's going to relate to No, just like fundamental, church, you know, like almost like code. Like right. hey, we have our own code. You have things you take from yeah. your parents that you implement with your kids, but some you implement yeah. in your life and business. I, I, I think the biggest thing was just hard work in that grind. Yeah. I think, like I said you before, get it yourself. Yeah, nothing was ever going to be handed to you. And, you know, we talk about the underdog mentality. It's like a chip on my shoulder yep. because – you know, I didn't go to, like, no major six powerhouse school. I went to junior college. I went to junior college, to Division two school, and I went to NAIA, you know, um, had a brief stint overseas as a, as a professional for a second. And, you know, all those steps, all that goes back to what my mom just instilled in me early is just, like, you know, if you want something, you got to work hard for it or else you're never going to get it. Yeah. And uh, if that's the only thing I can take from my mom, man, yeah. the value of that, man, besides the family part, you know, you know, so. So this post right here, it hit me just because these are the kind of things that I talk about and the way I think. But being a wolf, yeah, being man. a lion, yeah, setting goals, smashing them. This is my early, early IG days because yeah. I didn't know nothing about it. And, but it's and, real. and it's funny that we're looking at this stuff because Phil did not have an IG page. I know. And I used to grill him like, dude, you got to get on IG. I Man, just I, shared a couple I don't, of ones yesterday. I don't want to. I don't want to wanna go on IG. I don't want nobody to see my stuff. Now look at him. Be a wolf. Be a lion. Set goals. Smash them. Be stronger. Be better. Show people who you are. Never apologize for being awesome. Stay positive. Stay the course. And for me. You know, I think the last line was stay positive and stay the course. You know, I'm always going to be a wolf. I'm always going to be yeah, a lion. You, you know, it's in me. If you don't have it in you, you know, you, you, you already know if you're yep. a lion or a wolf. You know, you know, you know if it's time to eat, you're going to go eat. Facts. You know, uh, set goals, smash them, be strong. 
but stay positive and stay the course. You know, for me, you know, I've, I've heard no more than I've heard yes. And, you know, if, if I got down on hearing no, but I'm not, I'm not going to be where I'm at, you know? Yes all the time ain't yeah. no fun either. Yeah, it's <laughs> not, but I didn't hear yes a lot, yeah. you know? Ma, can I get those shoes? No. Nope. <laughs> you know? Coach, can I get in? Not nope. yet, you know? You know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, Sacramento Kings didn't hire me, you know, because uh, who knows? But, you know, I've heard no. Yeah. Milwaukee Bucks didn't hire me. I heard no. You know, Philadelphia didn't hire me twice. I heard no twice. So, you know, if I didn't, if I took all those things deep and, and shrunk into a shell, I'm not, yeah. we, we not here right now. We still grinding. We, yeah, we still grinding. We not in Orlando, you know. Facts. You know. Running our own race, Facts. being our own goat, you know. Facts. So, for sure. Yeah, I love that. That's nah. it's an oldie but goodie right there. To eat people's face off when you gotta yeah. eat people's face off. I eat. Yeah, trust me, I eat. I like to eat, bro. <laughs> yeah. Don't let my slim fit, my slim demeanor fool you. <laughs> no, I had a tiger. So, I know I've heard you talk about him before. I know you have oh, a connection yeah. to him. That looks like I don't know. if which tell us a little bit behind so, what's behind that. So this is Robert Williams. This is my second pre-draft workout. So, you know, again, you know, if you want to talk about the journey, you know. What year is that again? This was in 2018. Okay. So the, the journey really speaks for itself because this one, you know, this is dear to my heart because, you know, I, they came to me. You know, Bill Duffy, you. Bill Duffy, and them came to me asking me, and and I remember, I was in the in the trenches with Phil, and again, you kind of get that, you know, I had Ben Simmons. We knew he was going to be the number one overall pick. You know, Dejounte should have been higher than what he was, but he fell to the Spurs, and I'm like, if you're going to fall to anybody, yeah, fall to the Spurs is golden. <laughs> Look at him now, right? You know, and I, and I love Dejounte with all my heart. You know, I, I love that kid because he he worked his ass off. And I knew where he came from because I got family in Seattle. And the area he came from, not a lot of dudes get out of that area. Yeah. You know, as you know, you're from New York. You know, people got some yeah. areas that they, you, you know, dudes are stuck on the corner stuck. still. And they, they fucking probably the best basketball player you've ever seen. Yep. But they stuck on the corner. So I knew how I knew how hungry he was. You know, Ben was different. DeJounte was different. Robert was way different. So Robert was like, oh. Bill Duffy. I had called Bill Duffy two years prior to this. Like, hey, I'd like to work for you. You know, I want to be your 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 guy for your pre draft workouts. Why do I need you? I know I got Drew Hanlon, I got uh uh Packy Turner, I got these other guys. Why do I need you? So they gave me an opportunity and I What'd ran. You tell with them? Him. I said, Yeah, because I'm the best. <laughs> Fucking best, bro. Cause I'm a wolf. I'm a fucking wolf. I'm a, I'm, a, yo, I'm the fucking best at what I do, you know. And I learn from the best, and I take, and I Facts. take that with me, bro. So he felt that, you know. And Kevin Bradbury, shout out KB. KB came to me, said, "Hey, look, you know, we just got this guy Robert Williams from Texas A&M, freak of an athlete, you know. Can you get to Louisiana?" I said, "When you need me?" He said, "I need you there yesterday." Well, I said, "I'll be there in the morning." So they got my ticket, flew out to Louisiana. And if, if you've ever been to Shreveport, Louisiana, people, I apologize for all my Louisianians, if that's even a word, but there's nothing in Shreveport. It is now. Yeah, there's nothing in Shreveport, man. You know, there's, you know, there's a casino, there's a, there's a little, you know, strip mall or the, whatever those malls is where you get the discounts at. Um, but other than that, there's I, I did I, I it was like being in jail yeah you know you know but I was in a high price jail because I had a nice hotel mm -hmm. Hill and Honors but it was uh it was a, it was a process getting out there and Rob really didn't know how good he was yeah so we had four days to get him ready you did yeah we had four days to get him ready for that for that for his, for his, yeah. for his pro day. Yeah. His pro day was out in L.A. Robert hadn't touched the ball since March, right after they lost in the NCAA tournament. So my first workout with Robert, he comes in the gym with flip-flops. <laughs> Talking about I forgot my shoes. 2018. I said, yeah. I said, bro, 
how you not have basketball shoes and you're a basketball player? Yeah. I said, it's okay. I, I flew five hours to get here. We're going to work out in the flip-flops. Nice. Yep. Made him, you know, we just worked on some stuff where he couldn't have to cut or nothing like yeah. that. But we're going to do something, yeah. uh, you know, for our first day. I said, we That's got crazy. We got five days, and we're in this hot gym. I mean, it was like 100 and something degrees in this gym. Yeah. And he got on flip-flops. I said, hey, bro, we're going to do something. You know, I didn't, I didn't take two, two planes to yeah. get here for us not to do nothing. So we got we built that relationship on that day right there. The next day he had his shoes on. We went twice a day, and what we had shoes the, he had on. <laughs> whatever shoes he had some Nikes <laughs> on, but he had he had on some shoes. I don't even know what they was, but he had on some shoes finally, and, and we worked out hard for three days. Flew to L.A., and we had thirty minutes, uh, you know, because at that time he was out of shape. I mean, you want me? I, they can't. I I can't perform miracles yeah. that well to yeah. get a guy in shape for four days for yeah. an hour workout, which was not going to happen. That just wasn't going to happen. So I told Bill Duffy and KB, I said, "Hey, look, he can go hard for a good thirty minutes. I'll stretch it out, add in the free throws and yeah. all that stuff, but I'll make sure he looks good." You know, we get to UCLA's campus. There's Rico Hines in there doing his thing first. Then all of a sudden, Pat Riley walks in. Jerry West walks in. Tom Thibodeau was, uh, you know, um, uh, who, Brian Colangelo before he got fired. You know, that was actually the day he, he got the call about this, his wife doing all the Twitter texts on tweet and on Twitter and on for the Sixers. He got that call that day. I remember that because he was wow. standing right me. He got the call and then walked off. But, you know, all the GMs, all 32 NBA, all 30 NBA teams was in there. Rob says, Jay, I'm kind of nervous. I say, look, young buck, I'm gonna make you, yeah, I'm gonna make you work, but this is gonna be the best 30 minutes of your yeah. life. I said, all nice. I need you to do is go hard. I don't care if you end up throwing up, just go hard for 30 minutes, and they're gonna love you. Sure enough, he went hard. He 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 made some shots I didn't even think he could make, mm. you know. But he he came out bright lights, big city, and he came out and hit them shots. And uh, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. So you know, that, you know, Robert was. Every workout that Robert goes to, we need you to be on top of him. We need you to keep in shape, because at that time he was a top, he was a lottery sure. pick. But uh, you know, he we you know I went to every one and how many? I went to nine draft workouts, wow. and I couldn't be in the workout. Yeah, I had to be outside. But you just but threw the I process. Was, I, was, I watched the process with them. You know, I got them ready before they did the workout so i'd be in the gym once they started it i'd have to leave and or, or and once they were done we could stay in the gym and all that stuff but i got them ready i, I felt like i was his trainer man yeah. like 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 legitimate like stretching everything uh, you know getting them you know make sure he's eating right making sure he's doing Kept this them make, accountable all the way through yeah, the process did, and locked in i did everything yeah. man it was my first like yeah you made it moment to me yeah. like and when he slipped all the way down to 28 but again, he slips to Boston. Yeah, I mean, come on. That was that one we, right there. Yep, right? we never we never worked out with Boston. They they never watched us once work out, man. And to me, this is my proud daddy moment because they asked me to come along. They asked me to be along, and uh, you know, if I could give you stories on this one right here, bro, I can't go into too many. But yeah. you know, this one, this was a good day, man. I felt I felt the love that we had right there, man. Getting that dude ready for his first NBA season and his dreams, man. The dude came from a yeah. one light town. You one know, light, one light, bro. Right, right. You drive down this street, there is only one light. Everything else was stop signs. I was like, oh boy, you know, I'm not. In, where the hell am I at? That's yeah. what I was thinking when I was driving him around. But it was a culmination, like you saw his dream. <laughs> Come and he didn't he didn't expect to be there. Yeah. What did that feel like for you? And Man, something? it felt great. I, it felt great. You know, being at that press conference, being there with his parents, you know, uh with his sister, you know, his mentors, you know. I, I you know, we only got to hang out for two months, but I felt like I known him forever. Mm -hmm. And I mean that's the beauty of what I do with and, and I love that part, you know, because there's your organic that's your organic friendship. That's where it comes from. Yeah, so well, I took pride in that one. I took a lot of pride on that one. Yeah. So this one. That's the beginning. Yeah. 
you congratulate him. So you, yeah. this is 2018. Like, I know you told me but a story. Was, that was 20. I mean, the picture was taken in 2016. That's, okay, so yeah. that's. So, yeah. So he got the rookie of the year because it was two years yes. later. But, yeah, nah, Ben was, you know, so I, I'll give you the background to this one. So, you know, I've already, this is, I've already started my full course solutions to company and I'm out there coaching an AU team out in the, the Philadelphia area and, and um, we're up in Pittsburgh and Phil calls me up and says, hey, look, how fast can you get to Cleveland? Now I'm getting ready to drive back to back to Philadelphia because we just got our butts kicked in this AU tournament. So I'm already on the road and I'm like, hey, look, he said, I need you, could you come to Cleveland? I'm like, well, shoot, I'm only two hours away. It took me about 30 minutes to get off the freeway because, you know, the 95, man, I mean, uh, 76, you, got, you know, those 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 uh, exits come pretty far away. So I had to do a U-turn, drive up, drive up to Cleveland. He said, hey, look, you're going to get a workout. If you do good in this workout, you're going to have a job for two months. And I said, all right, well, what's up? He said, so he says, you got Ben Simmons and DeJounte Murray. And I said, oh, shit, all right? He said, don't worry about who comes in the gym. <laughs> Just worry about those two dudes and, and let them hear your voice and do what you do. So we get to Cleveland State. Never forget it. Walk in the gym. Ben's in there. DeJounte's in there already. Sure enough, Rich Paul walks in. As soon as Rich Paul walks in, LeBron walks in. Tristan Thompson walks in. Norris Cole at the time was with Clutch, walks in. So I got all these dudes in the gym. Phil's in the gym. He said, just do what you do. Do you? Right? So it was my first time ever, like, you know, meeting LeBron. And, you know, I'll never forget. He came up to me and said, hey, look, you know, he said, make sure Ben works on his left, right, right, left. Because when Ben shoots, he liked to hop. He liked to hop into his shot. And at the next level, you can't do that. You got to have a stride stop is what I call it. Left, right, right, left. And... You know, LeBron says, yo, you work on that, you work on that with him, hammer that on him, hammer that on him. That young fella needs to work. He's going to be great. So this was their first big client outside of LeBron. This okay. is where Clutch really yeah. started, you know. And, you know, I mean, they've, they've signed other players. Sure. But this, is this was their first big draft pick outside of LeBron. And this is where Clutch really started. And I was very thankful that, you know, Rich gave me the opportunity. You know, I did a great job. But if Ben and DeJounte didn't like me, yeah, then I would have kicked rocks and would have yep. drove back to Philadelphia. You know, instead I drove home only to pack a bag, only to drive right back back there. And I stayed, and that's pretty much where, for me, that's where I elevated my game. And that's where I'm, I'm with Phil every day. I'm watching what he does with Kyrie. I'm watching what he does with LeBron. You know, I'm watching these workouts every day, every day, every day. I'm in the gym. I'm rebounding. You know, I'm doing as much as I can for him. But I'm also in the gym with those guys two days a week. So it was like, I mean, two times a day. So I'm just implementing everything, and I and I got that, and I got it. I got it. And he came up, and he said, yo, you did a great job, bro. He said when the Sixers came and he did his workout with the Sixers, they were like, they were blown away. Like, a, you know, obviously everybody knocks on Ben about his shooting. You know, here's a great story, and I, and I got I got footage, footage of it. You know, it's like. Um, somebody from ESPN came in at the time, whoever the ESPN NBA analyst was for draft. And he had flown in from Hawaii because that's where he was coming from. from home. So he flew in from Hawaii, went straight to Cleveland. And we were at uh, a school out in Cleveland. And Rich is like, you know, we're going to showcase all of Ben. I said, all of Ben? He said, all of Ben. So I do a, a shooting drill, five spots, five shots. Best out of 25. NBA threes. Dude knocked down 23 out of 25 NBA threes. This is no joke. Knocked down 25 out of 20, 23 out of 25 NBA threes. And Chad Ford, and, and the, guy wrote, the guy writes, Ben Simmons can shoot. He wrote this, I just watched him work out with his trainer, and he's hitting these threes, and then next thing you know, next week, uh, NBA TV's in there doing all kind of stuff. And again, he does a great workout from the Dennis Scott and and all these people, and I'm like, man, I just showcased this dude can shoot the damn basketball, right? And I was really proud of myself. And, you know, he doesn't shoot 
for three, for four years later, four or five years later, and everybody used to, people were like, man, I thought you said you could help Ben shoot. I'm like, hey, bro, Ben can shoot. He's just, a, he's just at that time, he's a reluctant shooter. I said, the guy can play basketball. The, Keep the, the confidence. Yeah, I said, the gifts that that guy has are unbelievable. It's just a matter of, you know, using them in the right way. And, you know, yeah, Philadelphia fans are hard on them. They're hard on everybody, which is to be expected. It's not an easy place to play, you know. I think Ben, you know, and, and Brett Brown didn't see eye to eye too much a lot. I mean, even though Brett let him play, but, you know, I just think that he got caught a bad hand. Yeah. You know, but, you know, 6'10 and have that speed and that athleticism can guard anybody and has that vision. Unbelievable, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's just, 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 just got gifts, man. bro. Yeah. Some people, God just comes down and says, oh, you're a basketball player. Oh, you're a football player, you know? Touch. Yeah, you got that. That's the part of the process of what you do that I don't think is, is talked about. And not just you, just, yeah. you know coaches and, and trainers in general no nah, i mean the, the uh, confidence part like the, you yeah. know like obviously he could shoot and he's got the skills and all that but mm-hmm. like him and anyone else like when you put you just talked about robert williams like you're adding to their confidence level like in the process no question and i feel like that's just not talked about enough and not valued enough like in life you know yeah Which, i mean you know, when I was coaching college and, you know, and I was fortunate enough the first six to seven, six, seven years that I was coaching, I had a really good mentor in Denise Dillon. And I coached women's basketball. You know, I started out coaching women's basketball, um, which, which leads up, you know, to, you know, being here in Orlando. But, you know, she gave me that confidence to get in the gym with my players and to work with them, work with the players every day. Because mm-hmm. that's going to instill confidence in them. Gosh. when they, It's going to translate, you know. It might not translate right away. Some players it does. Some players it doesn't. The ones who it doesn't, and it progressively gets better over time, those are the ones you feel a lot more like the proud daddy moments. Sure. You know, and, you know, had not been for her to give me that voice and uh, still that, you know, hey, be you, speak your mind, say what you need to say. Get where they get them yeah. to where they need to get to, so I can play them. I mean, not a lot of coaches do that. You know, a lot of coaches will do all the coaching and have people just be pets. Yes, you know, your assistant coaches be you know mutes. You know, they sit on the sideline, they clap, they don't say much. You know, she gave me the fortitude to be able to talk and and and, and translate all that I all my little short knowledge that I had at the time uh, onto in, onto the team, which was cool. So, shout out Dee Dee, love you. Yeah, that adds to your value just, you know, in whatever role or, you know, on the staff. Yep. Like, you're able to get more out of a player than, you know, somebody else may. And that's okay because yeah. people – it goes back to, you know, connections and vibes and – There's that organic, know. man. That organic connection is nothing can beat that, man. It the is more time is. you spend like, time with somebody, the more organically your, your connection will be. And, you know, not a, a lot of coaches don't – don't emphasize player development as much as they should because this is where these kids need. Yeah. They need that mentorship. They need to, you know, if a kid's been 0 for 25, they how they get out of a slump? The only way to get out of a slump is to by shooting more. You got to get to the gym and shoot, work that out. It's all upstairs. Yeah. And if they're not getting it upstairs from their coaching staff, where are they going to get it from? But not everyone can connect with that. You know yeah. what I mean? Not everyone can get that translation. Yeah. And, and outside of that, it's just a, it goes back to what we were talking earlier yeah. just about, or I was explaining in relationships yeah. in general, you know, there's adult friendships. Like I have friends that like Jamil, like he knows yeah. how to tug on the right strings with me right. to get the most out of whatever it is I'm working on, you know, that yeah. nobody else can do. You working with Ben, you were able to give him the confidence in those moments to hit. I mean, who knows if he would have hit 23 out of 25, but knowing you, mm. no offense to him. Like, yeah. I don't think he's hitting 23 out of 25 just because I know what, you're yeah. able to bring, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just bring a good energy. Nah, it definitely it, attributed to yeah. some of those. So, nah, I mean, there's value sure. in that. For sure, man. And that's why I love what I do. Yeah. It ain't really work. It's, I'm just having fun with people. Yeah. That's you know? it. We just out there vibing. Yeah. Like we doing right now. We vibing yes, right sir. now. All day, every day, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, is this that Nike camp you were talking about earlier? 
You were talking about a Nike? Nah, this is another one. So, again, here goes the evolution of JC, man. This was uh, Nike All Asia Camp. So, you know, shout out to Girl for my man Girl, who was in the middle of this picture. He, he used to run the Nike Asia Camps. And this is Dave a uh, Atkins from, he used to coach the Wizards at the time. Now he's with the Portland Trail Blazers. Okay. DA, what's up, my guy? Um, we are in Shanghai. And this is, I just got done doing my pre draft workout out in Phoenix. You're doing those every year now yeah. at this point. And at that point, and since 2017, right? Yeah, 16. 16. So this is Nike finally reaching out and saying, hey, look, you know, we want to send you to Asia and work with the Chinese national team. They contact you directly. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, so this is where your Nike Connect come in and all that hard work that I did with Ben comes to fruition now. And, you know, Girl gave me an opportunity to go over there and work with the Nike All Asia Camp. And then it trans then it, I left there and went straight to Beijing to work with the the Chinese national team right before the World Cup. And they, they came to they went out to to Vegas to do a little pre pre workout. So it was cool. So it was I got to see all the guys and unbelievable experience, man. I had my first taste of really you know, I've been to China before. Uh, coaching some C, uh, some uh, D League G League players in, in a, like a ten game thing, but this was you know over thirty days. I spent you know there almost almost a month and a half wow. over there, and you know getting to be with their national team, knowing their players, Yi, uh, you know, Zhao uh, Wei, Zhao Wei, and Alan Ray, and all all those guys. Those guys are, you know. Uh, trying to use this as you know they they can ball they just they they have to when it when they're playing against americans you know sometimes our, our athleticism will take take over but you know chinese players can play man they're smart they're highly intelligent they they their craft they work on their craft every day a lot of days mm -hmm. a lot of times i spent in that gym man and it was and I had insomnia for like twenty days. I felt like you know when we got to go on. I got to go on the road with them. Work them so much. Yeah, they work them a lot, bro. But you know it was a tremendous. I was I was honored to be there, bro. And I used to get calls from my guy who used to coach over there, like, bro, they still show your 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 games on TV, and you can see you out there working the guys out for the game. And that's just an honor, man. You know, of course they're gonna see me. I was the only black guy on the yeah. court, you know. What I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool though, man. It was, a, it was you know I had finally. Finally accomplished something that I wanted to accomplish in a long time. And that's be a part of a national team. You know, who knows if I ever get the that chance. That was the goal of yours in the, pr in the yeah, journey. Yeah, in the journey, man. You know, I, you know, you see USA basketball and all that stuff. Man. But I would love to be a part of that. It's just not in the cars right now. You know, maybe in the future it will be. Who knows? But, you know, to be a part of that. And, you know, they didn't really play as good as they could have played. You know, he was really hurt. He was coming off an injury. And. And Yi's like there, you know, there's Yao Ming and then there's Yi. So, you know, if Yao Ming's Michael Jordan, Yi would be considered Kobe. Okay. You know, that's how okay. big, how big he was, you know, and and uh, he was just a phenomenal ball player and, and easy going. He played for the Lakers and, you know, he, uh, you know, he played a couple NBA teams, but just worked. Didn't say nothing. Yeah. Didn't talk a lot. Just went went about his business, man. And, and I got to see foreign players in a different aspect. Sure. You know, I also got in, and my motto and a lot of my things is just a kid from San Bruno because that's where I'm from. But for me to go to Beijing, China, see the Great Wall, yeah. walk the Great Wall, you know, those are things that I never thought yeah. in a million years that I'd ever get to do, you know. And, and it's funny because my sister got mad that I called my dad. I FaceTimed my dad from the Great Wall. And I was like, Dad, look at, look at where, look at where we're at. Look where, look at what we've done. Look where we uh -huh. made it to, you know. And, you know, I wish my mom was there, but, you know, I tell people all the time, she's with me everywhere I go. So yeah. wherever I go, she goes. So she was there walking up and down, walking up that long hall, those long brick roads, bro, because that was a trek. But, yeah. I've seen was, pictures and video. Yeah, it's it's amazing, man. So I had a – I'm blessed. I was definitely blessed. Well, I was talking to Phil. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking about the Sports Academy. Yeah. And he says Bomb Academy. Yeah. Any anytime anything Kobe comes up around, you know, the people that I've been able to, you know, blessed to meet and I'll just let it blow over. Even, you know, on Instagram, 
everyone tags the mob academy still mm-hmm. like uh, you know i'm like it's sports academy, academy. like yeah. i don't make that mistake on one and mom right. academy pops up every time yeah and i'm like no it's sports you know, academy because i know the story yeah. and phil also explained to me why the why name changed, changed you know, yeah. And, yeah. You know not that i'm not a clout chaser yeah. and not that that what i'm saying people are but i'm just very sensitive and i just let it if someone sh- happens to share some i'll let them yeah. share and i don't say anything but I feel like I got a, you know, you gotta ask. we got a super deep connection, yeah. you and no, I, you know, sure, on, on a deeper level. So hey. I, I do want to ask you yeah. about this one just because it's the theme of what we're doing. But nah, man. I know you so. mentioned be a part of, you know, um, Bro, I mean, that event. it was, it was, it was, you know, like, like sitting here looking at it right now. I just got a chill going through my body right now because, you know, that was, you know, shoot, I, I started, yeah, it started, right. but. The way he walked in and, and this whole intro to this video and when they start ball handling, a good friend of mine, a guy named Darren Hilliard, tagged me. He, he's like, JC, is that you? I know that ball head anywhere. <laughs> and I'm I'm over here doing dribbling drills with, with Tobias and uh, Tobias Harris and, you know, Phil and his business partner, Michelle. Um, they asked me to be invited to come to this academy. Phil's like, Jay, I'm doing... Uh, an, uh, an invitation only with Kobe. He said, and I want you to be a part of it. I said, bro, I mean, of course. What <laughs> question is what that? Kind yeah. of, why would you even, like, ask me? It's not you, done already? It, it's there. It's <laughs> like, he's like, look, you're not going to get paid. You got to find your own way out. And I just say, hey, look, bro, you want me there? I'm there. I'm already going there regardless because, you know, I was one of four coaches. Out of ten coaches who were there, I was one of four who weren't on NBA teams. And I want to say me, Jordan Lawley, uh, Packy Turner, and Alex Bazell. Uh, I can't I always get Alex's name wrong, but Alex B. And uh, we're there. And it was an honor, man. I mean, for 48 hours. I was there for just two days. Yeah, It was a two-day camp, you know. Kyrie, Buddy Hill, uh, IT, my I love me some Isaiah Thomas. It's like my like when they talk about family. Somebody asked me the other day. I don't mean to get off topic real quick, no, you're but good. they asked me who's the one player that you know if you called him right now he'll probably pick up. And I said it's probably it. They said I mean that's the connection that he has with Phil and he has with me. You know if you're in with it you're family, and he hit me up on my birthday. So it man I love you bro. I, I appreciate you bro IT, and yeah. and you know. Whatever's going, whatever they're doing to you right now, keep your head up, bro. It's going to come back full circle. We know you still got game left, bro. So just keep going and keep grinding, brother. Love you, man. But, you know, IT was there. Tobias. Uh, you saw Paul George, who I had a chance to sit down with. You saw uh, Kawhi Leonard, you know, Kyrie, of course. You know, all these. Uh, um, uh, Murray from Denver. And, you know, it was the most –
Right, but that's Kobe's word. If he call you motherfucker, yeah. I mean, I guess that was like some sort of like, yo, I like you yeah. type shit. Then why are you wrestling with this motherfucker? Just get this motherfucker right here, bring him down, hit him one time, go to the basket. You over there bumping, bumping him with him and fight with him. Just go buy him. It's a little motherfucker. I was like, he used this motherfucker like six times <laughs> to articulate me. You're know, like, yo, motherfucker, motherfucker. I'm like, but <laughs> it was the coolest point because yeah. I'm literally right here. Yeah. And I'm playing defense on him. And it was like that you made it moment. Yeah. There's nothing else that anybody can say about yeah. me as a basketball coach or trainer. I said, I was in the gym with one of the greatest players of all time. He's calling me a motherfucker. He's playing, he's, he's putting his body into me, bumping me, and shooting a fadeaway jumper no over my ass. I said, yeah. you can't take that moment away from me. Yeah. And, and, and in that instinct, you know, everybody in that gym was family. You know, and that's the beauty of Phil. And that's the beauty of Phil. And that's what makes him who he is. He didn't have to invite me. He could have put somebody else on. But, you know, 93 till infinity came Facts. into play. And that's where, you know, that organic relationship, you know, Jay, come here. Jay, go there. Jay, could you rebound? Jay, could you drive me to Sacramento? Jay, could you drive me to Marin? Because we're going to do a basketball camp at the Oakland, at the, at the Warriors. All that hard work led to that moment. And I'll never, you know, I can never thank him enough. And, and I'll give you another story afterwards. But, you know, being in that gym and that, and that type of venue with those players, I said, I, I, I'll never go backwards because I can only go up from so here. Where I'm supposed and to be. Yeah. Exactly. And and yeah. not being on the NBA team still hurts because I know I, c I should be there. But I got my respect from one of the greatest. I got my respect from Jamal that day, mm -hmm. who, you know, I know his agent who I worked with and, you know, the other coaches. You know, they saw the work that I put in. They know who I am. That's a real resume. Yeah. And you can't, you can't really – Take nothing away, you know. If you one, you know, ten coaches invited, and it was one of one. Say, was, say uh, less, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was one you of one. Sit on the way out. Yeah, say yeah, less. You know, was, say it, it was one of one. You know, ten coaches invited, one of, one of four who weren't in the NBA, who aren't in the NBA. You know, and I know what I'm doing, but uh, it was, yeah. You know, it, it's unfortunate moment. that he passed. Yeah. And I felt it. I didn't have the relationship that everybody else did. Cause it definitely hurt, um, especially because, you know, we had just seen him. It would only been like three months or something like that, and then he passes. And, you know, but, you know, for the people at the academy to still show me love, I go in there, you know, I still get the same feelings that I get when I walk in there. This is the first time I walked in there. It's the first time I saw him, you know, the only other person I would say I would get starstruck to would probably be MJ, because that was MJ. Yeah, you know, you know, Kobe mannerisms. He acted as if he, you know, that's the spitting image of Michael Jordan was in Kobe Bryant. You know, same mentality, same hunger, same I want to kill you. Yeah. Don't matter who the heck you are, I'm gonna kill you regardless. If you're my best man at my wedding, I'm gonna kill yeah. you. Type stuff when you got on the court, and I love that about a man and. The, the chalk talks were great. You know, watching those guys, Buddy Hill, the De'Aaron the Foxes, they lit up when Kobe got on the board and started drawing yeah. stuff. And to watch those guys light up, yeah, that was the best part of the whole yeah. 48 hours. Yeah, You know, seeing those guys light up, man. But, again, 93 to had, had had we have not known each other for, you know, as long as we had, I probably wouldn't have been there. So uh, I appreciate you, P.H., Always. Yeah, so, you know, to piggyback, so, we're, you know, we're driving to L.A., me and Phil are in a car together, and, and I get a call from the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. And he's like, yo, tell him where you just came from. Tell him where you just came from. So I'm telling the, the, the GM and the, and, the, and the G League coach, hey, look, you know, you know, I just left the Mamba Academy. I was one of four non-NBA coaches out of the ten there. Hint, hint, like, yo, you know, I know my shit, right? And this is with D Ham, you know. Congratulations, D Ham. Shout out to you, your brother. But, um, you know, D Ham was all excited because he, you know, I've known Darvin before he got in the NBA, and okay. I was, and, and when he was coaching in the G League and stuff like that. And 
you know, we'd always talked about coaching together. I'm kind of still, still hurt, bro. Still hurt, but uh, you know, it just ain't in the cards right now. But you know, I got that call and I was thinking it was I was gonna go there. I was gonna be with the Milwaukee Bucks. I had just trained Eric Bledsoe the summer earlier that summer. Saw that. So yeah. you know, EB had his best year with uh, I mean, the year before with 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 them that year. Yeah, the year before. So he when he got traded, you know. He, uh, you know, EB just signed a $75 million contract extension. So I was like, man, you know, it definitely got to happen now. And, you know, again, the business side kicks in. You know, they the, the coach ends up hiring somebody he knows and has a relationship with. And it's just like you know, one of these days these no's are going to turn into a yes. Yes. So. They are. You just got to you gotta run your own race. Got to keep Thanks, going, man. baby. Keep going. So this is what I've been looking forward to. So I've watched some stuff with you and T Cloud for a while. <laughs> but what what I grab, what I see yep. is I see the personality that I get to see with you mm-hmm. in person. Like I see it the most through your relationship with her oh, on yeah. the gram. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like I feel yeah. like I I don't know what your relationship was like with her, but from the looks and just being able to read stuff the way I is nasty like you know what i mean like i'm i'm almost jealous of like it it just looks like yo she's somebody that gets you and you get her and because of that you know i don't know how much you've worked with her and you share but yeah i'm curious about that relationship because to me this is that's the first one that comes up first one yeah and and i'll read the caps and self-confidence is the best outfit rock it and own it and um she had finally approached me, so we had we had so I is she she's from the area, so she's from Philadelphia. At this point, yeah. she's doing what? So this this point, she's still in the WNBA. She's just coming off. This is right before COVID hit. Okay, and the season where they had to come down to yep. Orlando and be in a lockdown. Yep. So you know, me and me and T me and and, and Cloud Nine Natasha T Cloud. I've known her since she was in high school. Okay, I watched her. I recruited her. And um, this particular gym, um, a person who was like her, her uh, really close to her best friend's mom, okay. worked at the facility. She said, hey, JC, could you work out Natasha? You know, she got drafted by the, the Mystics and all that stuff. And I said, come on, I know Natasha. I'll work her out. But, you know, she was still young at the time. This was before this picture. You know, I'm just building up to how our relationship sure. got to. And, you know, we worked out a few times. And, you know, she's young. She's in the league. She's not really – working as hard as she should be yet because she's still young. I get it. So about four years ago, you know, that's pretty, yeah, right before, a year before the pandemic hit, we really started working. She said, hey, Jay, I'm in town. I want to spend more time in town. Could we do more workouts? I said, absolutely. And it just clicked. Yeah. It's like a brother-sister. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's like brother-and-sister relationship, you know. You know, we get in, we, you know, we, we talk, we talk and shit to each other. We, we know, you know, she's just one of those people. Once you walk in the room, you're automatically going to feel like you've known her for 20 years. Yeah. She's that type of person. And like you. <laughs> yeah. Like like, facts, man. You <laughs> like know, you it's, guys just, are similar. it's just the infectious personality that we have. And in, in, in the, it, it, you know, she's watched. She did her research. She's not going to let anybody yeah, work her out, sure. you know. You know, after a while, you get to a certain point where your status becomes who you are. And, and uh, you know, I'm in the gym, and she's watching, and she's watching. And finally, he's like, yo, let's rock. And, and when we started, when we hit the ground, we hit the ground. Um, and then COVID hits, and she's supposed to go to Italy. And, you know... After that, she didn't want to play in the WNBA, you know, because Natasha is very, very. She's. I don't even really talk about basketball with her. It's just she's on another playing field than a lot of other young women in this world. And what I mean by that is, is that she's not afraid to say what's on her mind. She doesn't give a shit. Uh-huh. If she sees something wrong, she'll talk about it. Sure. And what she's doing in the DC and in our community and and, and being a a positive influence for not just young women, but also for men, you know. I see her on TV talking about empowerment, you know, um, our rights, our black, our civil rights, you know, sticking up, you know, Black Lives Matter, all that. 
you know, that shit just goes, it gives me chills, man, because once she has a avenue to do it, you know, her out, you know, she, she's built her name up to where people listen to her listen. and they're going to follow her and, and like li- really listen. And, you know, I, I just in awe of her, man. She's just one of those people who I just absolutely adore, man. And she's been like my little sister and I'm always going to take that with, you know, wherever we go, it ain't basketball with us. It's, it's, it's a brother, it's a brother, big brother, little sister type shit with us, man. And, uh, she's awesome, bro. She's, she's an incredible person. And, I love you, girl. You know that. Yeah. Once it you meet her, off. man, yeah, you meet her, you are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about, man. And and she's, she is the she is as classy as it gets. Hard worker works hard. Works her. How ass she works up. in the gym. Yeah. Oh man, it, 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 I mean, pick stuff up. She 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 hates missing like anybody. She will get really mad. A lot of we gonna do it again, Jay. We gonna do it again, Jay. And I'm like, I got you. What? I already know. I know we gonna do it again. You didn't meet the mark, so we gotta do it again. But student of the game. Who who are some players that she like growing up that she, uh, you know, watch and try to tailor herself after? Oh, that's a good question. Have to ask her that. Uh, I, I mean, the question's could, been asked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tosh, we'll have to ask. I have to ask you that the next time I see you. Do you uh, talk to her regularly? We do. Outside of training her, we do. You know, you know, we, yeah. you know. My thing with her is, is when it's her off season, I let her work. I let her be her. You know. Um, I see you pulling for her during the season and yep. sending her positive stuff. Yep. It's just dope. No, she's just one of those. Like I said, man, you know, it, it's it's off. It's more than hoop, man. You know, that's a that's a family right there. Her dogs, man. Her dogs scare me though. Them rock rock, <laughs> them rock, rock man. I'd be nervous coming over the house. They be looking at me. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, but nah, she's great, man. And uh, when the bubble was going on, what was I know you weren't working for any teams or anything, mm-hmm. but like. How did that affect you? Like, were you we? Well, it came at the it came relationships, at, it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, uh, for the NBA and WMM, it's like it it came at the wrong. It's it's like three two three months down the line, you know. That's pretty much you know my busy time is f- right at the end of March Madness. Whenever the in, the last year, the last week of the Final Four, is where pre draft workouts really normally try to start to formulate. And then the summertime. So if you could say from April to September or, or end of September is really my busy time. And around that time, the bubble was going on. So I'm out of work. And that, not to mention, I'm not going overseas like I used yeah. to. So now I'm, I'm, I got a double whammy, you know. I'm not, I'm not really working a lot. And I'm not traveling a lot, you know. So that, that, that hurt the the business a lot and that's what a lot of other people but and I was fortunate enough during that time to come down here I was in Orlando I was in in the villages working out Trey man and I was traveling back and forth between here and Philly every every other week to work out Trey man over the summer the thunder right OKC OKC yeah 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 Florida Gators and you know that kind of got me back on my horse again you know so to speak and you know, you know, and again, another relationship just just got grown organically. You know, I was introduced to him by an agent, asked me to give him an evaluation of the kid, and the kid loved the workout. His people loved the workout. His dad loved the workout. And they wanted me. They wanted more. And Trey's the type of kid he he wants more. He doesn't want to do nothing else but get better. Yeah. And I love that shit. You know, the the funny story is he got drafted on draft night. Most kids have a draft party. He had a draft party, but then left his own draft party to go get some shots up. That's just the type of kid he is. You know, that's your wolf. That's here's, all you your, know, yeah. here's your wolf. Here's your lion that's that's hungry that wants more. And I love I love guys like that. I love women like that. I love working with those type of Players. individuals. Oh. Yeah, man, because it just makes the work that much more fun. Yeah. So, you know, so actually when that bubble time hit, I was still coming here. So I was I was nervous, but then I got that, you know. A lot of ten people on an airplane was was kind of yeah, scary yeah, at yeah. the time, but it was Oof. cool though. But but yeah, it was it was a rough time, man. You know, COVID hit everybody differently. But you know, for us trainers, you know, if, unless unless you have your own facility, yeah, you know, and I don't, you know, I I gotta use wherever I can go. So so let's fast forward a little bit mm-hmm. to you're doing the pre-draft here in yep. Orlando in mm-hmm. Nona area. Mm-hmm. You were in town. Let's see, what was that? 
April is no, yeah, April. I got the pick. That's cool. First time we met. I'm already following you just because mm -hmm. of the connection with Phil, yeah. and I'm already yep. watching some of this stuff. I don't know why. I watched one of your stories that day, and <laughs> I seen the location Nona. I was like, I oh, she's like, 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 oh, that's that. He's here. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> I didn't yep. even know you. Yep. That's the way I treat the internet, man. If I watch somebody's stuff, like, I'm going to act like gravy. I know them. It's like, all gravy, it's bro. Goes, man. It's You're like, good. roll through. Yeah, come through, man. We came through. Yep. In that first day, yep. I think that was your second week, uh, maybe it's third week. Nah, I don't even say week. I might have been like the first third, day, the third or fourth day. Yeah, maybe you had you had yeah. been out there, but it was the first day. That, yeah, yeah, because somebody had just came in. Was Caleb, Caleb had just Caleb came just in. came in. Yep, that one. Yeah. I don't know. If that wasn't that day, but that was yeah, man. after you sent me the pick. We came out and got to meet April thirtieth. Got yeah. to meet you, watch you, yeah. do your thing with those guys. <laughs> That was yeah, man. that that's, was blessing. Appreciate the invite. Man. But nah, it was it, it's family, being man. Being aware on the internet. Nah, it's, it's family, bro. You know, you reached out. And I told you to come through. You guys came through. You know, and communication just kept growing, bro. Yeah. I mean, certain people you know right off the bat are right. Yes, sir. You know, and they got the same energy. And I'm a guy who feeds off energy, man. If you ain't got the same energy that I got. You know, yeah, That's you good. know, I'll, I'll give you my government name, you know, <laughs> I'll give you James. If I introduce myself as James and that means uh, we ain't on the same page. But if you hear me say JC right out the gate, man, yes, you sir. just know it's, it's just it's, on. It's, it's organic, man. And nah, man, I, I was appreciative. You guys came in. I was appreciative of, of, of Jay and his and his communication and, and his passion. You can hear passion in people's voices and the way they talk yeah. and communicate, man. I loved it, man. I love talking hoop, man. Yeah. I love being around people who love hoop just yep. as much as I love it, and it's easy. You know, relationships are easier when it's, it's when it's about that. So, no, I was I was I was happy as hell to see you guys come in, man. And yeah, that yeah. was love. I was that yep. was a great experience. I was, uh, it was just. I mean, I had never seen anything like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Just the you going through that process. It was yeah. Just all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy, man. It's like, you know, pre-draft workouts are a lot different than most other workouts, and I try to tell people that. You know, in the summertime is where you learn you you get better at certain parts of your game, but pre-draft you only got a certain amount of time, and I can't correct nobody's shot. Yeah, I could try to help them implement certain moves, verbiage, language is very crucial. You got to know your language because what you're saying. NBA teams are probably saying it. Um, the things that they're about to do, these kids got to be mentally prepared for it. It's not easy, man. You know, and and you know, you coming in and you guys seeing these guys hit the floor. I don't, I don't waste no time. You know, once we get done with our workout, we hitting the, we hitting the floor running. And you know, it, it was good for you guys to see that. You know, it was good that oh. you brought little, you know, BP up yeah, there to see I that man. Yeah, appreciate you and, letting that, and, letting and, us and come and, and get them in the yeah. gym a little bit, man, and and seeing stuff like that because it, it adds a little bit more of a, a a mental view of exactly what that process yeah. is like it's just murderous man you know it's not easy you know what these what these young men got to go through is not easy but you know it's also fun it's their journey it just makes yeah. the dream bringing bp you know, yeah. obviously bring yeah. going with coach and being yeah. able to sit there with jameel and yeah. just you know him see that and, and, and just sponge and, yep. you know, just build the relationship. But then, you know, you had come out to the lab and yep. spent some time with BP and some of the kids. So being able to bring him back and make him see, like, you know. How hard they going. This is where you want to be. This is what you. it is. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, it make the dream feel attainable because yep. they see it, you know. You got yep. to see it. It's like, it's right there. Like, it's not, it's not something I've never seen people working now i've seen it like right. i'm not that but that's attainable right i can be there i can do that so i mm. appreciate you know no. you opening the doors to us to let us come you no. know just I experience mean, that i love that stuff bro i mean but that's I what like, you do i love it's what you, i do you, man you i like help connect people to their dreams man dream chasing man i'm, yeah. I'm I, I say I, I turn dreams into reality you know what pre-draft process is. I'm turning dreams into reality. Everybody has a dream to get to the NBA or to play overseas or be a professional athlete at any, on any level. If I can get anybody to fulfill those dreams, and I've done my job, man, and I think that's a beautiful 
that's a beautiful aspect of what I do or what any of us do. Yeah. You know, I love it. I love it. You know, if a kid is 10 years old and his dream is to start on, you know, the CYO varsity, yeah, then I'm, then we then we'd accomplish it. You get in the lab and do it, you know. Let's go. So, uh, yeah, but I love getting in the gym at pre-draft time because that's it's just exciting knowing that these guys might have an opportunity to be in the NBA and then you know, I didn't get that opportunity. Yeah. I wasn't I didn't have nobody like me. I didn't have nobody like Phil. Can when you I imagine? Oh shit. Yeah, crazy, bro. It's just it w- it would <laughs> figure stuff out on our own. Yeah, I mean, you me and my boy D Foster's, you know, Derek Derek Foster was one of the best point guards I've ever played with in my life. And, you know, he he was he pushed me to my to to reach my maximum potential. And and, and if if I had him earlier in my life, it'd been different, you know. We're the same age. He's a year older than me, but I mean, but I used to watch him play in high school. And the, for me, when I finally got to work out with him, yeah, you know, I was still thinking of, like I'm a little kid watching him in high school, and he's only a year older than me, kind of like Phil. You know, I used to wherever D. Foss was at, I'd work out. Wherever Phil was at, I'd work out. You know, those guys molded me and got me who I am today, man. I love that shit. I wish the little kid. I wish kids would do that more, you know. And I wish kids would go out more, get on the, get out and play with somebody who's out there, who's out, who's a little bit better than them. Yeah, they're all you just know? worried they're about, about they're gonna end up on a gram, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's like, man. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's a gift and a curse. This 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 the social media era, but you know. Uh, I couldn't imagine what uh, me having it when I was younger. I couldn't. Have I mean, done I it. think yeah. kids don't take advantage of that the right way. Like yeah. you got to know that, like nine out of ten kids are mm-hmm. like, I ain't trying to end up on the gram. Yeah. So, like, really, to me, I think it's that much easier to go at guys right on the court, especially in high school. Yeah. You know, like they don't want to be the highlight. And you <laughs> ain't going against that many guys that gonna, are that yeah, guy. Yeah. So, like, to not go at guys, yeah, you missing out. You yeah. missing opportunities. Yeah, well, now, I laugh at this mixtape stuff. Mixtapes used to be something you gave to a girl, man. <laughs> you know, now mixtapes was on the IG, bro. You know, it's like, uh, uh, you, know, you give her that mixtape? Yeah, man, I had Luther on there and everything, man. You know, that's how I found <laughs> Jamil. That's that's what that's what clicked. I remember when I I was looking for somebody when I started coaching that team for BP the AAU team is. His stuff wasn't like that. Yeah, it wasn't like these, you know, these walk-ins and they just, you know, profile and right. meanwhile, like I don't get minutes, you know, and any shot he just took was in warm-ups. It was just fluid, like anything you see. I suppose. It's just in real time. It's yeah. just like, and you hear, hear the talking and the coaching over it behind it, and it was just, well, what was this guy I'm like? This yeah. is, this seemed right. Just like you said, you just know this seemed right. Right. Yep. Uh, uh, All right, switch gears. Talk to me. Phil, describe yep. in three words. Man, first word that's going to jump out of me is brotherhood, brother. Um, loyal, smart businessman. I'm going to be who I am, but uh, he, helped, he helped me get where I am. You know, I mean... I, I still think Sharpen our, you? Yeah, I think our personalities are somewhat still, you know, a little different. You can see similarities, but yeah. we're totally different. But, uh, I mean, without his guidance, without watching him, you know, uh, it'd be tough for me to say that we're in this seat and talking to each other right now yeah. if it wasn't for him, you know. So, you know, he's... He's been a big part of my life, so it's tough. Yeah. 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 Jamil. You described Jamil in three yeah. words. Passion. First three words that come to mind. Passion comes out right yeah. away. Passion <laughs> comes out. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna say loyal because he, he seems he seems very loyal to me. Um. And real. Yeah. Yeah. Realism. He gonna give it to you. You know. He ain't gonna sugarcoat it. Mm-hmm. He gonna tell you exactly what he's thinking. You know, if you shit, you shit. Yeah. He's going to tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and if you, you got to love that, though. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, if, if you ain't this, he going to tell you. Yeah. You know, real quick, man. You know, with his accent. Yep. Man. <laughs> Jay, I love you, boy. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, me. Describe me man, in three words. Man. Man. I'm going to go right off the bat. 
we had a connection, and that connection is is just uh, friendship. You know, I think our friendship has grown a little bit more than I, obviously anybody that I've been around in this area. You and uh, friendship, smart as hell. I'm gonna say witty. I think you're pretty witty when you want to be, bro. I think I'm witty, bro. <laughs> Nobody says that. I think I'm witty. No, I think they, witty. I think they don't pick it up. They, they don't, they don't so, pick it up. <laughs> I don't want to say slick. When we were driving in L.A., bro. I was like, yo, my man is witty, bro. Yeah, I think I'm witty. <laughs> Sometimes. But I, yo, instant connection and loyalty. Bro, you can't give everyone everything in one. Like, I give them, if it's a minute and it's fire a minute, I can't give them that. Right. All of it. I'm going to give them, like, half of it. And that half is still, yeah. but I'm going to leave them hanging. And maybe you'll find the rest of that somewhere else, and right. maybe you won't. But as you're looking for it, you can see something else that's hot of mine that you like Bro, that we put out. When you hit me with that, was that a Lady of Rage reference? <laughs> yo, I knew, I knew, yo, I knew right then yo. and there we was <laughs> golden, dog. I knew right then and there we was golden, bro. I said he knew, he knows it, he knows what I'm talking about. When you reference that, man, bro. I'm a music guy. I grew up on <laughs> She had the Afro Puffs rage like on with your bad self. Yes, sir. Battling in the driveway to mm. early 90s hip hop, man. Come on. Bro, man. My first what? My first cassette tape hip hop was probably, I think it was Black Sheep. Mm. Like you can get with this. Or you, so you get, with, get that. with that. Black Sheep, probably. I think I had a Cypress Hill, a Tribe Called Quest. That's my kind of. I would say my vibe and what, like, if I had to make an album. That's your first, those are your first couple like, albums? Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. see, my first couple, first album I literally bought was Run DMC. Uh, their first album, Jam Master. Uh, I just remember having those, ta- you know what I mean? Like, no, I'm talking about albums. I wanted to be a DJ. Yeah. So I messed up my mom's needles a lot. Oh, yeah. Trying to scratch on them mm-hmm. on the regular needles and not ones that you could scratch on was, moms used to be pissed. That. Two Live Crew. Had that. Right. And Beastie Boys. The Beastie Boys. Yeah. But I connected with those. The, I yeah. don't know. You know what I mean? I'm just saying those are the yeah. first albums I got. But no, nah, you talking about Tribe, seeing them. Tribe, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, tribe. Gangstar. Love me some yep. Gangstar. Yeah, I got yeah. Gangstar. Yeah. All that stuff, man. Music is where it's at for me, man. It's like I wanted to be a DJ secretly so bad yeah, when I was too. younger, bro. I wanted to get on the ladder. <laughs> That's lab why I like incorporating that into yeah. it. Just hits me on put on phone. Nate Dog the other day. <laughs> I was like, this dude put on Nate Dog. Nobody. Yo, I run a whole. I run a whole theme with it for the day. I run a whole <laughs> I like, theme yeah, with I was it. Like this dude had. Nate I just Dog get it line after it, line in the different. I was like, use it to tell a story, man. Yeah. Keep that flow. Absolutely, bro. It's yeah. a flow. It's a flow, man. Nah, I mean you guys are good people, man. You and Jay came. Came from right out the gate, man, and you know you don't get to meet organic people like you guys, man. When you guys first come in the gym, yeah, you know you don't get to meet that love that was shown from day one, yeah. is, and you don't get to meet that. You don't. You can't. You, yeah. And not every place does that. But like love is one of those things, man. Like it's there or it's not. Yep. You know what For I mean? Sure. Like you can't reshape that. No. Like it just. It's just there. It's just there. Yep. Yep. Everything wow. else can be sculpted and adjusted. Love, it's just boom. Is there or it's not? Absolutely, bro. Moving forward in the next, let's call it three years, what's on your list? <sighs> like, what are you trying to accomplish? What, are you, what do you see, you know, next steps, next, you know, next phases of your career? Awesome. Obviously, you know, we talked about, mm. you know, the staff and, you know, you feel a couple opportunities. Yeah, you know, I mean, could have been yours. Is that still like on uh, target, or are you folk? What are you focused on? Well, next three years is a great question, B. I mean, man, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I sometimes think about. I, I'm always gonna dream for the NBA. I think that's there. Uh, might be the WNBA. That could be there. You know, I once worked there here in Orlando with the Miracle. Um. I'd like to get three more pre-draft camps in, and more if I can. If 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 my position allows it allows me to do it. Are those uh, coming every year? They come every year. It's just a matter of do I want to take them or not. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's got to be the right time, right the, the right right person I'm working with. Yeah. Who I'm working for. Yeah. 
Um, those are all. When they good. come to you, do you do what do you do? You do your homework on oh, the yeah. athletes. That yeah. is that the big part of it. Uh, the athletes, not so much. It's more of the person, the agent. I had to learn early that it's a business. Yeah. Is no it, our, our friendship is organic. This yeah. is this, this is this what yeah. it is right here. But business this is, is business, business is different. Yeah. yeah, and business and friendship don't always uh, come together. Yeah. And for me, early I thought that it was about friendship and yeah. not about business. Yeah. And then the business kicks in, and it's like, oh, okay, you're done, Jay. Nice seeing you. Yeah. Well, shoot, you know, we were just talking every day together. Yeah. You know, yeah. For three months, for two and a half months, we talked every day. Now we're not going to talk just, anymore. I'm yeah. just gonna, you know, so that I had to learn, and, and, it. And, and, yeah. and and it, and that took took its toll. Do I really want to go back and do that again with the right with the right people? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I always love doing pre draft workouts because again, I'm dream chasing. Sure. Right. And and I want to make sure those dreams it's are fulfilled. Easy to have for you to have energy for yeah. that because yeah. of who I am and where yeah. I want and how much it means to me. See, the basketball means a lot. It's that's not no. Yeah. No, nah, this I ain't is going anywhere. this is this is love from twelve years old, man, and you know I don't lost many relationships because of this love for this game, man, and you know if you ain't on that same level as me with that love, and then why am I here? We're not gonna see eye to eye. Exactly. So, so this relationship ain't gonna mature. Yeah. yeah. So the NBA would still be a stepping stone, but I think the biggest thing for me is my kids are getting older. I kind of want to see them grow up and get better at their sports and whatever they want to accomplish. So. Within the next three years is, you know, if I'm not working in the NBA, then I'm still going to be doing what I do, you know, traveling around. Yeah. You know, I love traveling. I love working with kids in other languages and other countries and stuff like that. I mean, that stuff is cool. Bro. You had something on one of your posts, and I thought mm-hmm. I wanted to pull it up. But you, <laughs> it says something about, I don't care yeah. what country you in, yeah. what language yeah. you speak. You know, I'm going to find it real quick. No, it was, it was in the uh, the the China. Uh, no, yeah, the, yeah. One, the, the, one of those ones, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean basketball is still gonna be basketball. And so it's, it's it, there's no there's no language to basketball besides, nice. you know, putting the ball on a hoop. Yeah. Right. Locking somebody up on defense. They know what that means. I I don't need to speak that language to say, hey, look, you gotta put the ball in the basket. Right? So uh yeah, so I mean, for me, that would be the best part of over the next three years, four or five years, yeah. is, is growing my name still, growing growing 94 feet of game. You know, See, I'm I don't think you need to grow your name, bro. Yeah, like, no. think of all the things we just talked about. <laughs> like, you, you, the, the work, I still, the I work is there, man. It's, it's just there. I just, I still think it's just not where it should be at. No, you know? I know you, I know you, and I, and I appreciate that. I, I still think I got room to still grow and get bigger and get bigger than what I am. Nah, oh, man. no doubt. We yeah. all do. But like yeah, your but body of work is here, man. I hear you. Your I body of work is here. And I hope, yep. you know, that's seen through this, you know, by a lot of people. And, yep. um, you know, they see the person because, you know, maybe not so much three years ago, yeah. but I feel like where we are in 2022, mm-hmm. regardless of what industry you're in, I feel like that holds more value than it ever did. No. You know what I mean? You could be mm-hmm. elite at your craft, mm-hmm. and that's great, whatever industry. But, like, what kind of person are you? Like, what kind of human being are you? I really think that holds more weight now in today's time than it ever did. It did, yeah, for sure. And I feel like that's why, mm-hmm. you know, we click. That's why I vibe with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're just a good human, bro. You're mm-hmm. one of the few people. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, He's one of the few people yeah. in the world <laughs> that I met on one hand that, bro, I see that guy. Yeah. Man, I smile. He gave me a smile from inside out. Like, I feel myself right. really smile. You know what I mean? Where yeah. I'm like, what the fuck was that? Oh, damn, I'm smiling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not a lot of people get that out of me. I got yeah. that from my time with Phil. Right. You know, I'll yep. get that laughing with Jamil. Yep. But other than that, man, ain't no ma- many people that can cause me to smile like that where I catch myself. Right. Where it seems like, you know, wait, you know, you don't... With your kids, you're gonna smile. It's yeah, thing, but no, nah, man, you know that's that's that's, that's where you're at, man. Like you're I'm, on that list with me. That's all praise to Ernestine, man. My mom, Ernestine Olivia. She if she didn't, you know, tell me how to be right, you know, then it'd be a different story. I could, you know, any, anybody could be an asshole. Sure. You know, you know, what's the verse in the Bible? It takes more effort though. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier. Yeah, to I try be. not to be, man, but yeah. Where you are now in today's time, if you had to give up one, your hearing or your vision, 
Which one are you giving up and why? If I had to give up my hearing yeah. or my vision. So if I was like JC, yeah. I need to take yeah. one of these away from you for the rest of your life. Which one are you keeping? Keeping vision. Why? Um, I mean, I can still talk with my eyes. I can still see. I can still understand. Kind of underst- hard to understand. I mean, if I was hearing impaired, it'd be tough to understand, you know, the world around mm-hmm. me. I think with my vision, I could see. I could still see and understand things going around me. Yeah, you know, I could still be a part of. I'm not you think you still be ha- a happy person without hearing? Oh, yeah. the music's a I big mean, part of your music life. Music is so. tough. It's tough. Music will be That's tough. That's why for me, yeah, it'll be years. very hard. Years. Years. Music's yeah. the only thing that can I, yeah. switch my mood. Like, like I, I guess, said, I can see somebody dancing. Yeah. And I know they're like on we got a, a song for everything. They got a vibe. I mean? They're on a vibe right there. So I can understand that True. they're on a vibe right there. I, if, I yeah. can't, if I can't see it, I can hear it. Yeah. But if I can't see the vibe, then that's also tough. Yeah. But for me, it definitely, I, I would, I would. I'd have to give up hearing, man. I don't, mm, it's tough. That's you know those those are two things that are always dear to me, man. It's it's tough, man, is seeing people who are hearing impaired or or have lost their vision because there's so much of the world that they don't have, you know. Mm. But they also have different senses that are heightened yeah, and stuff like that, and so up. they they they're still fulfilled. And I'll never be in their shoes, you know. Hope, hopefully not, knock on wood. But but yeah, man, I'd have to give up my hearing. That'd be tough, though. Damn it, because my music is big. Uh, 